Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach 2019. Edin is going to be the round 8 review. And we're taking a look at the round 8 summary. A pretty good score for the week I had. Oh boy, this is... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get into it in a second, but I'm pretty darn happy to get over 1,200. I was heavily affected this week. You know, I've been, I'd say I've been pretty lucky in terms of injuries and all that sort of stuff, but this week, yeah, we uh, we got hit pretty badly. So, yeah, 1,202, only top 10%, so it was obviously a pretty high scoring week, and I think a big reason for that was Latrell Mitchell um, scoring very, very big. Uh, but as you can see, we actually dropped 386 spots. We're now up to 451 overall. And I, I guess that probably goes to show that most of the top people don't have Latrell Mitchell yet. Um, probably a few of them do, but probably most people that have Mitchell are like lower in the, the ranks because, I don't know, I, I sort of just feel like Mitchell... For like, you know, your top end players, he was a bit, he's a bit of an afterthought. I mean, he's definitely a guy you want to bring in, but probably not till later. So, it's it's good for me for sure. So, yeah, very, I'm very happy with it. But let's go through, we'll go through the team and there's some big, there's some big ramifications, dude. Oh, and I'm actually, I'm pretty happy because I, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second, but as you can see, the one saving grace, I captain Damian Cook, and, you know, the one way I can be somewhat happy with my Broncos getting destroyed is having Damian Cook play against them and captaining him in that game. It, <laughs> it, made, the, it made the loss a lot more bearable, I will be honest. <laughs> so, I got 109, banked me 218 points, um... Easily my best captaincy choice, even though I've done a couple of good ones with Ponga. But Cook, 109. Smith came back down to earth a little bit with 52. Uh, our front row, we were pretty heavily affected here as well. So, Man de Pau only got 55. He again, I was watching this game and, like, he got injured as well. Like, I think, I don't know if it was, like, another, like, neck type injury, but he, a tackle, a tackle around, a bit before he usually goes off, he was... He was complaining to the ref, and he was sort of, uh, you know, having a, like a thing at his neck. So, it looked like a bit of a crusher, and he had less game time again. And then our boy, <coughs> Adam Fanua Blake, I'm so salty about this one, dude. Thankfully, he got me 30 points, but, you know, that's not, it's not great for a guy that I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty confident he's, like, a really good pod for us, but... You know, he's been out for two weeks with suspension, and this game he... And the, oh, it's such an annoying thing, because Adam Fanor Blake, he's such a monster, but he's a guy, a good guy I can sort of compare him to is Sikamanu. Pretty different, um, Sikamanu's obviously a back row, but I, I remember back in the day of Sikamanu in the NRL, he constantly got like ankle and knee injuries just because he was so powerful and every time he ran out the line like he kept driving the legs so it meant other guys came in down low and that's where you know these ankle injuries and knee injuries happen and for Noah Blake is very very similar like he keeps driving and then you know players are going to come in and attack the legs and of course that's what happened he got injured like in the 11th minute he barely played any minutes so I don't know I <clears throat> I'm hoping I, I'm I feel like he's probably going to be right for this week, and I'm obviously going to keep Vanilla Blake because, or I'm at least going to keep him for round 12. Hopefully, he just plays. <laughs> if he just gets some game time, he's he's an absolute beast. But um, yeah, pretty frustrating, all things considered. And then Payne Haas, I put him on the reserves again. Absolute monster. Um, 57. Honestly, like if you didn't, if you didn't get on Payne Haas a few weeks ago, you uh, yeah, a little bit uh, behind there. But the other guy here, Tom Flegler. So I think I talked about last week that I was gonna trade Flegler out for probably Corey Waddell. I ended up not doing it, and as you can see, Flegler again, he got twenty six. Uh, he went up a little bit in price. I don't think you know he's a guy that's not gonna go up too much. I think around here, potentially 300k is like his, his cut off, but the reason I didn't do it was because Corey Waddell is definitely overpriced 
for a bench forward. And, I mean, again, he played... <laughs> I was so annoyed, dude, because when Fanua Blake went off, Corey Waddell had, like, huge minutes. He only got, like, 50 points, so it wasn't, like, too bad. But, uh, you know, he his minutes have been so inflated with the injuries. I think his price will potentially come back down a little bit if um, their forward pack stays fit. And I was sort of... Again, I was, I was a bit like, I might as well save the trade because I'm not going to play Corey Waddell in my 17, even if I get him this week. And then, you know, who knows? He could get injured in this game. He could get injured in the next couple. I might as well just wait because, you know, round 12 is a few weeks away. Anything could happen. So I, I saved the trade, which I'm pretty happy about now because I have to make two trades for sure. Um... But uh, let's move on here. The back row of Jake Trebojevic, solid 62 again. Um, you know, I, I can't be disappointed, but I mean, Jake Trebo he's, he's he's been a bit of a letdown, I think, Jake Trebojevic. Uh, I'm going to keep him, I think. He is a guy I'm tempted to trade out for like that round 12, but there's, uh, there's more pressing issues at the moment. But uh, Jai Arrow got 80 which is very good. You know, he played big minutes. He scored well. Got to be happy with that. Um, and it saves Jai Arrow this week. <laughs> I was probably potentially looking at getting rid of Arrow this week, but he definitely, you know, I'm definitely keeping Arrow now, probably till round 12 and then getting rid of him. Cameron Murray, again, solid 64. Got to be happy with that. And then Sam Burgess, thankfully he got that try. Otherwise, he wouldn't have scored too well, but... And then our big boy here, Viliami Kikau, 40 points. Just, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the injury strikes, dude. I actually don't... I, 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 I was trying to look at, like, what happened. They they probably know now when I'm making this video, but, like, even, like, a day after, they, they didn't know if it was an ankle or a knee injury, which is very, very weird. Um... I mean, it looked like a knee injury, but I didn't really see that many replays of it. So, I think whatever, he's definitely going to be out for quite a few weeks. And I think, unfortunately, he has to go. Um, you know, and it hurts even more because I only recently brought him in. But, yeah, we, we there's definitely some good options. <laughs> there's definitely some good options in the back row. So, I'm not too salty. Uh, Jaden Ockenbohr, 45. So, you know, he's gone up in price very, very nicely. Um, and then our halves actually went very good. Nathan Cleary, 79. Very nice. Chanel, uh, Chanel Harris-Tavita, 38. But this could be his last game. Um, I usually don't know what the Warriors are going to do. But obviously, <laughs> signing Nick Arima, you would expect Nick Arima to go into the halves. But potentially they might keep Harris, but watching that game, they did bench Harris with like 20 minutes to go, so I think that's pretty bad signs for him. <laughs> um, I think it's a little, I don't know, dude, Stephen Kearney, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, Harris DeVito has looked pretty solid, um, a very good young talent, but I mean, they purchased Nick Arima, so they've pretty much got to play him. So Harris DeVito, he's made, he's made some very good cash, but we're going to have to probably get rid of him soon, uh, depending what happens with teams. Kalen Ponga, 90. Um, thankfully, he scored, I mean, he, he he still scored pretty well, but he got that try at the very end, which uh, just topped it off. It was a beauty of a try. He just absolutely burned RTS. It was beautiful, dude. Um, and then Dylan Brown's still not back. Hope, I mean, fingers crossed, but it doesn't look good for Dylan Brown coming back anytime soon. And moving into the back line, John Bateman. Um, this one, okay, so it's very annoying that Bateman is out injured because he's obviously a gun. He's a keeper. Um, he was also going to play the round 12 by. But the one good thing I would say is that everybody has Bateman, or, or at least everybody who is in the top 40,000. <laughs> like everyone who is even having a go at Supercoach has John Bateman, so it's not a big injury loss per se, because, I mean, you know, I think he I think he is a guy you will have to get rid of. It's it's, it's tempting to keep him, but I think you pretty much have to. Um, 
it's just too much cash to really be sitting there on the bench. Uh, Clint Gutherson turned his form around. He was terrible two weeks ago. So were the Eels in general, but he came out, he got involved, and yeah, good work, Clint Gutherson. He's still been my best pickup all year, I've got to be honest. A brilliant, uh, brilliant purchase for me at the start of the season. Charles Nickel clocks that again. He got... <laughs> it was not looking good, dude. This game, this game... I was watching the Panthers Raiders and I was losing my shit, dude. Charles Nickel Clockstar got sin binned, so that's already bad. John Bateman went off early, that was bad. And then freaking Kikia got injured. <laughs> Kikia got freaking injured and serious injury, so that was just an awful game. But thankfully, Nickel Clockstar scored a try. Um, he got 63 even with the sin, sin binning. Uh, Britton Okoro, 62. I think he scored a try as well. So, <laughs> a lot of my players scored tries. Otherwise, they would have been pretty uh, pretty low scoring. Um, although, it was a try off a, uh, off a kick. So, he didn't get like the line break as well. Uh, and then, we have James Tedesco. Again, 68. Very, very solid. Uh, and then, our other back line, Bronson Sherry. Uh, came back down to earth a little bit. 23. Um, Zach Lomax, who I brought in last week. 41. Apparently, uh, I think he might be moving to 5'8 for Corey Norman. I don't know if that's good or bad for super coach wise I'm still pretty happy to have Lomax, but, you know. And, <laughs> and then our boy here, Bailey Simonson. Um, never thought he would get another game for the Raiders, but Jordan Rapana was out injured and Simonson strapped on the boots. He actually, like, he looks... I don't know. I'm a bit surprised he only scored 22. He looked like he... um. Would have scored a few more. Like he, he took the ball like for a lot of carries, and it looked like he busted a few tackles. But I don't know, dude. Um, sometimes the scores, uh, sometimes the scoring is a little bit iffy on Super Coach. In all, in all honesty, but I don't know. I mean, if <laughs> as a Simonson owner, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty happy if maybe Rapana just sort of had a niggling injury up and until round twelve, and Simonson sort of just snuck in there for a week, that would be very nice, but doubtful it'll happen, and then Corey Allen, 24, he really just, <laughs> I mean, he's gone up in a bit of price, but geez, he he really struggles to score points, so there's the team, so the two trades I pretty much have to make, um, John Bateman, they, they reckon he's going to be out for five weeks with a fractured eye socket, obviously a pretty bad injury, like it's one that you you can't really come back early from because it's, you know, it's pretty risky, um, an injury like that. I mean, there's so much collision. It's going to get a knock for sure. So it's pretty much got to be 100% for that to to come back from. Um, so I think he's got to go. Um, I could pretty much get anyone for Bateman in back row or center. And then the other boy here, kick out. I can get anyone for him as well. So... I think at the moment, Kikau is definitely number one trade because, you know, I think he could be out for long, long term. I don't know exactly yet, but have a look here. So we've got, there's some good options, dude. Um, probably number one is the big fella, Jason Tamalolo. And uh, look at this, dude. He he came out and scored a try. He got 85 points um, and he scored bloody... 19, <laughs> his first, his first week, 99, second week where he got injured, 19, and then, is that right, did he, has any played, that was his, yeah, it must have been his, yeah, third game this week, yeah, because it's first, um, price change, but he still only dropped like 20k with a 19 score when he got injured, he's just such a monster dude. I think I've got to bring in Tamalolo. And the, the great thing, like, I was always going to bring in Tamalolo, but, you know, at this stage, like, he's he's probably going to... He's not going to drop much more money, honestly. Like, I'd be I'd be surprised. Um, so, he's an option, Jason Tamalolo. I was going to... Like I said, I was going to get him anyway for the round, twi uh, round 12... And he's also just a monster. Like, he's definitely a must-have for your team. And then other guys uh, in contention. I mean, Tohu Harris, honestly, not, not a bad shout. Uh, he's actually been pretty solid this year. 
Uh, he's been a, I think he's gone a bit under the radar, honestly, but, you know, he's, he's gone pretty, pretty well, honestly. Um, but other guys, I mean, Manu Ma'u, again, like his, his price is probably a little bit overpriced because he's starting on the bench. Um, annoyingly, he scored that try in week one, so I'm not going to get him, but he's, he's tempting in a couple of weeks, hopefully, his price goes down and he can be very, very tempting because he's second row and center wing. So, yeah, he's he's a, he's a tempting one. Like, I could actually wait a little bit and then trade out, like, John Bateman for him in a couple of weeks, but we'll see. Uh, other guys, I mean, Corey Harrowy or Nira, um, you know, he scored 47. I didn't... Everyone was jumping on. I, I still... I don't... I'm not a huge fan I actually don't know how he scored 47. I thought he was, I thought he was a bit lower than that, but probably like a couple of just silly offloads at the end of the game probably bumped him up. Uh, the other guy here, Reese Martin, he's probably a must-have. Like his price has come down pretty nicely because of a couple of like benches. He's only 3.7% ownership. I think Martin is a much better purchase than Harawira Nira. It is a little bit worrying because Dean Pay does tend to just muck around with things a lot. But yeah, he's he's definitely a, uh, a tempting option. So I think at the moment, it's, it's Tamalolo and Reese Martin. Uh, other guys, I mean, I'm looking at guys that play round 12 and that aren't going to play Origin. So, Ryan Matter, does he play round 12? I don't think the Tigers do, do they? I don't know, but he's gone, he's actually gone very well. Uh, I'm surprised he actually is still pretty low. I mean, his average is 63, um, and he's still only 530k. Like, he's a pretty, pretty sneaky pickup. I don't think that, do the Tigers play in round 12? I don't think so. They might, actually. Um, Sean Lane. <laughs> I could go back down to Sean Lane, cut my losses, but nah, I, I I can't do that, dude. I can't. It's just, you know, I already traded out Sean Lane. I probably, looking back on it, I shouldn't have. Like, it's, it's wasted me a trade because Kickout's now injured, but I can't go back there. Um, and then other guys, you know, no one really else. So I think, yeah, at the moment, looking, I mean, we got 785,000. We're killing it with cash, dude. It's uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then we'll look in the back line because if we trade out John Bateman, uh, he can be traded out for center wing or second row. And there are some very, very good options here. Um, <laughs> Latrell Mitchell. Um, definitely not going to get Latrell Mitchell. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I definitely think he's going to be one of the top center wing scorers, but... I think it's it's just a bit silly to get him because he's going to miss round 12. Um, he's going to miss both the buys. And over that origin period, he could get rested as well in their backup game. So he could miss three weeks coming up. So I, I think I definitely will pick up Mitchell, but not until after the origin period. Uh, again, Manu Ma'u is pretty tempting just because he plays around 12. So that could be definite. John Bateman to Ma'u. Uh, hopefully Ma'u just drops in a little bit of price if he comes off the bench a couple more times. And then, I don't know, he might not even get a starting role though. So I'm a little bit worried about him. Um, and then other guys, Jared Croker, he plays around 12. So he could be a good little pickup. He's been pretty solid again. He's averaged nearly 60. Uh, Esan Masters, I, again, I don't think the Tigers are at play around 12, uh, Joey Leilua has been pretty dominant, um, obviously out last week, but yeah, pretty good, Blake Ferguson, he is a very, very tempting one, I, I don't know, his price has dropped significantly, um, he did score 85, which is a bit annoying, because he had a it wasn't going very well until he scored that try. So his price might start going back up, but he played, I, I don't know. He might get picked for origin, dude. I don't know. We'll, he might be a guy that you can pick up just before round 12. If you, when you know if he's getting picked or not, because I wouldn't get Ferguson for the next couple of weeks, because I think there's a very, personally, I think he should be the winger for New South Wales. I think he's the best winger in the game. So, 
I think it's silly for him not to get selected, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know what Fittler's going to do, really. Uh, and then other guys, you know, there's, there's a few more. Jordan Rapana, if he comes back, he could be a pretty cheap uh, gun to pick up. But, yeah, there, there's some interesting stuff to look at. Yeah, so, you know, had a bit of a shocker uh, injury-wise, but we still had a very good week. And I think that just goes to show you the depth of the team. And even with the injuries, like, if I didn't even make any trades, I could still put in a pretty solid team, honestly. Like, I'd put Bronson Sherry in for Bateman. Um, and then on the bench, I would probably play, like, Ockenbohr, um, Zach Lomax as well. Like, both those guys can score, like, 40, 50-plus. So, it's a pretty solid team at the moment. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, and I'll see you in the next one.